let me introduce you to Sharice Williams. So Sharice Williams is a former ICU nurse who is the CEO of Green and Gorgeous. She holds Living on Live Food certification and is also a live food educator and raw vegan chef. Green and Gorgeous provides education, inspiration and tools for individuals and groups who are ready to release extra weight, chronic ailments and a disempowering mindset. We are so excited to share this raw vegan cooking class with you today. I'll hand you over now to Sharice Williams and to Carolyn. Hello, good afternoon. Can you hear me okay? Uh-oh. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Yes, we hear you. <laughs> we can see you and hear you very well. Excellent, thank you. I'll point the uh, camera down momentarily. The setup is kind of interesting, but anyway, I'll make sure that you're able to show, that you're able to see what it is that I'm doing. So that being said, this has been such a wonderful retreat. And oh, sure. okay. Just and so what I want to share with you today are actually three of my favorite uh, go-to recipes. They are raw vegan. And I know sometimes when people hear the words raw vegan, they're like, what? What is that? <laughs> and so it's plant-based. And basically it's eating food in its natural form. I like to call it unadulterated. I always encourage people to eat as close to nature as possible. And so when you're talking about raw vegan or um, living food, it's, it's preparing a food in such a way and where it's not heated over 115 or 118 degrees. Because over that um, temperature, you start to destroy the natural nutrients, the, the natural enzymes that um, naturally occur in our foods. And so that defeats the whole purpose, right? When we're eating, we want to make sure we're getting all the nutrients, all the phytonutrients, all, everything. We want everything, right? And so, um, so that is, that's one of the reasons, or that kind of explains a little bit about raw vegan or live food. Um, you may hear a different term. So again, 115, 118 degrees or less. And oftentimes when I say that, people are like, well, what can you eat? <laughs> and um, so basically a raw food, and I hate to say diet, but a raw food way of eating is fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and sprouted grains. And, and again, people are like, um, okay, so what can I eat? <laughs> and so it's not just salads, which are great. We all love salads, right? It's not just salads and smoothies, which definitely you can eat salads and smoothies, but it's things like I'm going to prepare today. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare one of my favorite beverages. So if you're the type of person who's trying to transition, really trying to wean yourself off of sugar, you're wanting to, maybe you are uh, a person that consumes a lot of sugary drinks, like lemonades or like from Chick-fil-A or, or from wherever, or sodas perhaps, um, this will be a great, it's simple, easy alternative that, uh, so that you can start weaning yourself off of that stuff, right? Because we all know that sugar is so highly inflammatory, right? Highly inflammatory, highly addictive. Oh my goodness. That's why it's so difficult to stop eating it or drinking it. And so this is a really great alternative. I make it for anyone who ever comes over and they love it. So it's a hibiscus ginger lemonade. Delicious. I wish we were here. I wish we had... So we can hear each other and see each other, but I wish there was like smell a vision or like taste a vision or something so you can taste it or smell it through the through the Zoom, but we don't have that yet. So we're gonna be making a hibiscus ginger lemonade. We're also going to make a avocado stuffed portobello mushroom. Yeah. And we're going to make a nice cream, not ice cream, but nice cream. It's a non-dairy um, ice cream. And it's delicious. And just one, one thing that I have to share with you guys is that pretty much anything that I make in the kitchen is about 10 or 15 minutes or less. So yes, we're going to make all of that in this hour. And, um, and, and I'll try, hopefully we'll have some time at the very end to have, uh, if you'll have questions. So uh, thank you, Caroline, for managing the chat. So let's get to it. Um, oh, let me mention this too. I, I definitely want to mention this. So some of the benefits of eating uh, raw or live food Number one, energy through the roof. So if you're someone who you just don't have a lot of energy, you need more energy, literally, if you can, the more fresh fruits and vegetables that you can consume, you'll start to see your energy increasing. Weight release. You guys, I was able to lose 45 pounds just eating in this way, eating and drinking in this way. Um, my migraines went away. 
um, fitness, my pain, I had knee pain, um, totally went away. And so raw food, raw vegan food or raw plant-based food has been credited with reversing lots of chronic diseases, which is amazing. And so that's what I do. I teach busy, high achieving women how to heal their bodies with the food that they eat, the thoughts that they think and the words that they speak so that they can release excess weight and reverse and prevent disease. So with that, let's get started with our lemonade. So I'm gonna point the camera down. Well, first of all, let me tell you what you need. Not that you're making it, but, and I can provide these recipes later. You're gonna need three apples of your choice. So I've used um, honey crisp. I love pink ladies, but I couldn't find any pink ladies. So uh, honey crisp. So you need three apples, one lemon, and um, the ginger is optional. But ginger is amazing. We know how amazing ginger is for our gut health, for our digestive uh, system. It's great for nausea. It's great for um, any type of digestive upset, really. So ginger is amazing. Plus, it's an antibacterial, antiviral. It's like Ginger is amazing for your uh, for your um, immune system. So we're going to use ginger. I like, clearly, I like a lot of ginger. <laughs> That's why it's so big. Um, so apples, lemons, ginger. That's it. Apple, lemon, ginger. Oh, hibiscus. I forgot. Hibiscus. So let me show you. Hibiscus flower. So you guys, this is amazing. You can get it if you're here in Houston. I know we have people from all over the world. But if you're here in Houston, you can get it at um, H-E-B. If not, um, you can you can get it on Amazon too. You can actually grow your own hibiscus. Many people grow hibiscus flowers. So these are just dry hibiscus flowers, and it's amazing um, for blood pressure. It help, naturally helps to lower your blood pressure. Now, incidentally, it's also a laxative. If you don't dilute it, if you don't add enough water and dilute it, you will find yourself in the bathroom, which may be may or not may may or may not be a good thing, just depending on your normal bowel function, but. Anyway, um, hibiscus leaves are amazing. And so that's what we're gonna do. And so what, so the only prep work that I did was I had a hot, um, a cup of hot water and a tablespoon of hibiscus leaves. That's all this is, hot water and hibiscus leaves. Okay, you see it has this beautiful burgundy color. All right, in addition to that, I've already juiced, let me point the thing down there. Can y'all see? Ah. You can't see, huh, hold on, there we go. I've already juiced um, two apples. And so now I'm gonna juice the last apple along with, you love to grow hibiscus, oh great, yes. Yes, you can definitely grow it. So I'm gonna juice the last apple, it's gonna be loud, I'm just giving you a heads up. We're gonna juice the last apple with ginger and a lemon, okay? So here we go. So just brace yourself for a second because it's gonna be loud, but not for long. Okay, that's it. So great question. What section of HB? You want to go to where the um like the hot tea is, wherever you would go to get your hot tea. It's in the hot tea aisle. So if you're gonna go buy some Earl Grey or um the hot tea aisle. Earl Grey or the 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 uh, I'm trying to think what other teas there are. I'll let you get Earl Grey hot tea in. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Doris, there's another question. Can we make that without a juicer? Um, you, so if you make, if you don't have a juicer, I, you, you could make this, but it would be more of a smoothie, which is fine. Absolutely fine. It's going to be thicker, not a problem. Um, I would definitely suggest at some point um, investing in a juicer, you know, it used to be juicers used to be very, very expensive. Now you can get a juicer, 125 bucks, Amazon. And um, that may sound like a lot, but you guys, we spend a lot of money on a lot of stuff, just random things, right? $10 here for Starbucks and Chipotle or whatever. And things start to add up, but literally you can, juicers aren't, at, there can be some expensive ones. Um, this one's a Breville Juice Fountain Elite. Um, I think this one was maybe on 300 something dollars, but now, like I said, you can find them at Target. You can find them in, on Amazon. I've seen juices for like $100, $125. So start where you can, just start where you can. Otherwise, use a blender and then you can make this as a smoothie. So I'm going to move this out of the way. But either way, either way, juice or smoothie, either way. All right. And so now 
what I'm going to do is I just have a little mesh and a, and a carafe, and I'm going to just strain the juice. You don't have to do this part, um, but but I am. Okay, Elsie, can you see that? Let's try that. So this is just the apple juice, and I'm just straining it. And I'm also going to do the same. I'm also going to do the same with, again, this was just a cup of water and a cup of hot water, excuse me, and a tablespoon of hibiscus leaves. And so you don't need any sweetener. You have the natural sweetness from the apples. And it's this sweet, it's very sweet. Now you don't have to even add the hibiscus. In fact, um, I love hibiscus, so that's why I added it. However, you could just do um, the apples, the lemon, and the ginger. And if you don't like ginger, apples and lemon. <laughs> there we go. And I'm just rolling around to mix it. And so now I like to, I like to be fancy. So I have this little glass. Isn't the color amazing? That's what I love about the hibiscus. I mean, yes, it's amazing for blood pressure. I don't even have high blood pressure, but I love the taste of it and I love the color most of all. And so I like to be fancy. You can definitely drink it out of whatever, but I have a little mint leaf in here and a little um, uh, lemon decoration. Y'all, this is so delicious. You won't even want, like once you start drinking this, you won't even want the really sugary drinks. Like, from, like I, I always say lemonade from Chick-fil-A. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I really wish you could taste this. This is del delicious. Um, and I know that there's some of you thinking right now, oh my God, that's gotta be a lot of sugar. So let's talk about that for a second. Just to kind of put it in perspective, a lemonade, for instance, from Chick-fil-A, 55 grams of sugar, that's a lot. Even a Sprite or a ginger ale, 44 grams of sugar. This, even with just three apples, it's it's actually 30, around 30, 33 grams of sugar, which is less than the other two uh, options that I mentioned, but it's different, you guys. We're talking processed sugar versus natural fructose. Your body processes it differently. It has a different effect on your body. With that processed sugar, we're talking super inflammatory to your body. We're talking super addictive, highly addictive, whereas when you're drinking or eating natural foods with um, sugars that from a natural source, like our apples, it's definitely a more, it's an anti-inflammatory um, um, drink because you're using anti-inflammatory foods, okay? So they're naturally, fruits, vegetables are naturally anti-inflammatory. Um, and you don't have to worry about the, the addictive factor because it's not highly processed like sugar. So cheers. This is so good. Okay, I'm gonna move this over. And I will, then we're going to, um, there is, there's one more question. It's like, what do you do with the pulp? Oh, with the, oh, great question. You can make, um, crackers. You can make crackers. You can actually make bread. Even, um, I usually make crackers. Um, you, if you have a dehydrator, I've never, I've never not, I've never made crackers, anything other than a dehydrator. So you can take that pulp. You can make it into uh, crackers, healthy crackers in a dehydrator. So great question. How, how do you do that? Oh, how about, how about I share a recipe? I'll share yeah. a recipe. Yeah, but you have to have a dehydrator. Or I say that, or your, um, as long as your um, oven goes to like 115, 118, if, if you can adjust it to that temperature, mine doesn't go that low. Mine goes to, I think 200 or maybe it's over 118. But if you do have some of the newer um, ovens, do go that low. And if that's the case, then you're good to go. So yes, I will share that. All right. So our next thing we're gonna do, I cut my hand off here. The next thing we're going to make is another one of my favorites. And I always, oh my goodness, Maya, I saw that somewhere. I saw a hibiscus taco, hibiscus flower taco on, I think it was on Instagram. And I thought, huh, I should try that. It looks so delicious, but I've never tried it. Never tried it as a taco. Um, but what I was saying about the avocado stuffed portobello mushrooms, it is so delicious. It is so quick and, um, you don't have to be vegan or plant-based necessarily to eat it, nor, nor that's it. That's that, that holds true for any of the things that I'm making today. But, um, my husband, 
who was a meat and potatoes guy, he's slowly converting, I've noticed. I've noticed he's requesting me to make different foods, um, different plant-based foods. And I said, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Um, but anyway, he loves this. He loves this. And he is definitely a meat and potatoes kind of guy. But like I said, he's he's coming over. He's, he's transitioning over, which is kind of cool. All right, so this is what I do. Um, if I don't know if everyone on here is plant-based, but if you're not, one of the things that you um, can substitute for meat are mushrooms. Mushrooms are great substitutes for meat. So, because because um, the mushrooms kind of have a meaty texture, so it kind of tricks your palate into thinking that you're eating meat, but you're not. So I always encourage if you're wanting to, if you're trying to wean yourself off of meat, start substituting in mushrooms. Today we're going to be using portobello, portobello mushrooms. And so what I have. So what I do is when I get home from the grocery store with my mushrooms or with my groceries, what I do first is I go ahead and just wash my mushrooms, the mushroom caps, the portobello caps. And then what I do is I put them in a Ziploc or a Pyrex dish and I use liquid aminos. You could use coconut aminos. So liquid aminos is a um, soy sauce alternative. It's gluten-free. So if you have gluten allergies, it's, it's gluten-free. You can use it. Um, Otherwise, I'll use either liquid aminos or I'll use um, coconut aminos, or you can even use nama shoyu. Nama shoyu is a non-pasteurized uh, soy sauce. So either of those three, but for today I use liquid aminos. And so it's liquid aminos in hot water. That's it. The reason why I do that is because when you soak them, go up a little bit, when you soak your mushrooms, there's my head, when you soak your mushrooms, in hot water um, and even the liquid aminos, it, it um, softens them and it changes the texture. I personally don't really care for um, a raw mushroom straight out of the pack. To me, they're kind of rubbery. I just don't like that texture. Um, however, they're still considered raw because we could, yes, thank you, um, Caroline, thanks. And so, but they're still considered raw because we're not heating them other than the hot water from your, from your sink, okay? Or from your, wherever you get your hot water from. <laughs> so. Uh, what I have is the mushrooms, and I literally just sprinkled the um, liquid aminos into the mushroom cap, and then I put it, um, added some, a little bit of hot water, I say a little bit, maybe half a cup of hot water. I put it in the Ziploc, closed it up, threw in my avocado, and put hot water in the Tupperware. And I just leave it like that, or sometimes I just leave it in the sink. The hot, if I'm, I, I did this like, I did it like this, so that way I could show you guys, but um, I normally just throw it in the sink of hot water. And then I just proceed with putting up my groceries. So I'm all about maximizing time. I don't want to sit around and wait for my 15 minutes or so for my mushrooms. So, so while this is being getting warmed by the hot water and softening up, the texture is changing. I'm putting up the groceries, we're doing whatever. And you can let them marinate for as little as 15 minutes or even the night before. Sometimes I put them just like this in a Pyrex dish and put them in the refrigerator the night before. And then they're, they're good to go the next morning. So it really just depends on the um how you, it depends on the texture that you like your mushrooms to be i like more of a softer kind of a um if you've ever had sauteed mushrooms like from a steak steakhouse or whatever um, it's more of that consistency and so what we're going to do is you don't need any appliances for this one we're going to take our avocado we are going to cut our avocado All right, and then we're just gonna remove our avocado from here. Don't you just love it when the avocado's perfect? Avocados can be tricky. <laughs> you think you buy them right on time, you open them, you're like, oh, you're like a day, day late. Anyway, um, did you know, little trivia, did you know that avocado has more potassium than bananas? Did you know? A little trivia there. Yes, all righty. So here we are. Now, I will tell you, the Nama Shoyu or the liquid aminos, um, they're salty. So you're not gonna add any salt. I don't usually add, I rarely use salt anyway, to tell you the truth, um, but it's already kind of salty. So you're not gonna add any additional salt. But what you are gonna do is you wanna add, if you're like me, you like flavorful, flavorful food. So you're gonna add some seasonings. So what we're gonna do here is, I like a little garlic powder. I'm just gonna sprinkle a little garlic powder. 
or you can use onion powder. Um, I like, oh my goodness, if you have not, if you have not used smoked paprika, you need smoked paprika in your life. I'm just saying. Everybody needs smoked paprika in their life. <laughs> Carolina agrees. And it doesn't take a little, it just it adds a little, it adds another layer of flavor. I'm trying to bend down so you can see me. And it adds a, a layer of flavor and it just gives it a little, little smokiness. It's just, it's so savory. It's delicious. So, and you find it in the same aisle as the um, seasonings. So I'm going to do just a little sprinkle. There we go. I'll need a little more. <laughs> all righty. And now all we're going to do is just stir it up. Nothing major. It's just one little avocado. That was actually probably medium-sized avocado. But super simple. Again, this is uh, something that you can literally whip up in 15 minutes. Or if you, if you put your, um, your mushrooms in the refrigerator overnight, you can literally whip this up in five minutes because your mushrooms are done. All right, and so here we go. You're not making guacamole, so you're not like adding additional tomatoes or things like that to it. It's just the avocado. All right, and so what you're gonna do is, you're gonna grab a plate, nice little plate. Hold on, I need another hand. All right. You are going to take your portobello that's been soaking. So can y'all see this? It's kind of flimsy now. It's 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 nice and tender. Um, versus, let me show you the, the original one. Versus this right out of the packet. Again, no right or wrong. I just prefer mine like this, kind of cooked, quote unquote cooked, if you will, versus the really raw version. But it's still raw. It's still, we have not killed off any of the nutrients or anything like that. So here we go. We are going to plate this, okay? We are then going to add a little spinach. Oh, wait, I gotta tell you something. This is actually not a raw, not a raw ingredient. However, it's really good. It's called a reduction. Um, it's a balsamic vinegar reduction. You're not gonna even use a whole serving. I think a serving is like a tablespoon. You might use half a teaspoon, okay? So you're not even going to use a whole lot, but I like to just kind of, um, can y'all see? Yeah. I like to just do this, do a little drizzle, okay? Then we're gonna add our spinach. So it's just raw spinach. Yummy, yummy. Could you do this with cooked spinach? Absolutely. Just remember, you wanna eat as close to nature as possible, okay? So if you're not gonna eat it completely raw, then lightly steam it. And you're just gonna literally just add in your avocado, mixture oh my god y'all this is you can, you can smell the smoked paprika all right and then to really just kind of kick it up a notch we are going to add i like to add mrs dash this is the lemon pepper mrs dash oh my gosh it's so good it's so good y'all all right, so we're gonna just sprinkle it with a little bit of lemon pepper across the top. It's not lemon, is it lemon pepper? Yeah, lemon pepper. Sprinkle that, oops, across the top. That's a little, little, little too much, but whatever. And then we are going to add another anti-inflammatory, turmeric. You could just sprinkle a little turmeric. You could have added it in. I like to see all the colors across the top, so. So just sprinkle a little turmeric. And then, we are going to add a little cilantro, great, great blood detoxer. Oh my gosh, cilantro is amazing. Heavy metal detoxer, it's amazing. It, plus it tastes really good, unless it doesn't. Unless there are some people that when they eat cilantro, it tastes like soap. So if you're that person, I'm so sorry, use parsley. Parsley is um, also a great uh, heavy metal detoxer. However, I'm of the belief that cilantro should go on everything. Maybe not everything, maybe not ice cream, but everything else, anything savory. All right, and so there's our cilantro. If you like a little kick of heat, crushed red peppers, plus it's pretty. I'm all for pretty. We eat with, we, we don't only eat with our mouth, right? First we eat with our eyes, it has to look good. And then of course we want it to taste good. There we go, okay. And if you wanted to, you could always drizzle a little more, just a teeny bit, not much. But it's really, um, 
the savory and sweet. There we go. You can't barely add any that time. But doesn't that look yummy? Can y'all see that? I don't want to slide off the plate. It is so good, y'all. Should I taste it? I'll taste it. I think that's weird when people don't taste the food. It's like, is it good or is it not good? <laughs> so hold on. <laughs> Let me grab a fork. Okay, so let's dive in. I didn't get any avocado. Let's get some avocado on here. Great, Sharice. Just pop it on over. Mmm. Mmm, 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 y'all. Okay, let me describe the taste to you. Number one is delicious. Okay, you can taste the, the saltiness of the liquid aminos. And then you have a little bit of heat from the um, crushed red peppers. The creaminess from the avocado. Oh my gosh, it's so good. And then the herbaceousness from the cilantro. It's, it's, you have to take my word for it. It's delicious. Ooh, <clears throat> that was hot. <laughs> I just swallowed a little piece of the uh, red pepper. It's like delicious. And then a little bit of the tartness from the lemon pepper. I can taste just a hint of that. It's delicious. Oh my gosh. So simple. Like I said, 15 minutes or less. Filling. When I tell you it's filling, sometimes people um, like I have somebody over there like, are you going to add anything with that? I'm like, just eat that. And they, they could barely eat it. They're like, oh my God, I'm so full. So you're satiated, it's the avocado, right? This is a fat, but it's a healthy fat. Um, but you're completely satiated. All of your taste buds are totally like tantalized and, um, and you, feel, you feel good. You can feel good about it, right? You didn't eat anything processed. You ate all healthy food. Delicious. So that is our avocado stuffed watermelon mushroom. Yay. I get to finish that off camera. Yummy. And so last but not least, we are going to make nice cream. We're going to make some nice cream. So the great thing about this nice cream, hold on, let me take a little sip. Mm -mm -mm. Delicious, like seriously. I wish we could have a party. Next time we do this in person, I'll make it for everybody. <laughs> okay, what you're gonna need for this, is you are going to need a um, blender, high speed, high speed blender. Again, you, they used to be super crazy expensive. I mean, you can, you can definitely go higher in, but now you can find a blender, a high speed blender for a hundred bucks. Thanks, Suzanne. A hundred bucks, 150 bucks at Target or even Amazon. So I have a Vitamix, um, but before I had a Vitamix, I can't remember what I had, but anyway, it wasn't expensive, but it did the job. Nutribullet, oh yeah, it's Nutribullet, 99 cents, 99 cents, 99 dollars. You can get a Nutribullet for 99 dollars. Thank you for whoever typed that in. Um, and it'll do the job. Yes. Target. Nutribullet. Okay. Last but not least, sometimes you want something sweet, right? But you don't want to, you really are trying to really nourish your body on a cellular level, right? You don't want to put in all the preservatives. We talked about the importance of eating as close to nature as possible. And so this recipe has three ingredients, three basic ingredients, and then you can kind of add on additional ingredients based on your uh, taste buds. But banana, so I have two to three frozen bananas. And what I do is whenever I go to the grocery store, I buy about three to four uh, bunches of bananas, two of them, because everyone in my house loves bananas. So two bunches, we kind of, know that that's what's going to be eaten over the next week or so. The other two, I let sit on the counter, excuse me, until they get speckled. And that's just the natural sugars um, coming to the surface. And so once they get speckled, go ahead and peel them and then put them in the freezer. Peel them, put them in a Ziploc or um, whatever freezer of uh, friendly container you have and then freeze them. That way you always have frozen bananas at your disposal. So when you want smoothies in the morning or when you're at the whim, you want some ice cream or an ice cream, they're already ready. You don't have to wait eight hours for a banana to freeze. So, so you're gonna need two to three frozen bananas, peeled bananas, and then you're gonna need your favorite fruit, a half a cup of your favorite fruit. I'm using frozen pineapples. What I do, and I, I just, I recommend this to everyone. I recommend this to all my clients, everybody. 
when um, by what's in season and then just freeze them, particularly things like strawberries. Strawberries can get really, really inexpensive. And when they are inexpensive, buy a lot and then freeze them, wash them, freeze them. Um, I do the same with pineapples. I love pineapples. So I buy a lot. Sometimes you can get two for $5 or whatever, um, or two for $4 even. Buy a lot, chop them up, freeze them. You have them all year long, okay? All right, so, froze, so two to three frozen bananas. I have um, half a cup of pineapple and then just a little bit about two tablespoons or so of almond milk. I made this almond milk. I know that earlier the discussion was about um, almond milk. You guys, it's so easy and quick to make almond milk. You just need, oh, this is cashew milk. Sorry, this is actually cashew milk. All you need is cashews or nut, whatever nut or seed that you want and water, that's it. You can, you can get fancy with it if you want to add a date, if you want it to be sweetened or cinnamon or vanilla, if you want it to you know, have another flavor, but just the basic recipe, one to three ratio, one cup of nuts or seeds, three cups of water, blend it up, strain it. You got yourself a whole lot of milk and you didn't have to go to the store and you know exactly what's in it. No preservatives. So here we go. Here's our blender. We are going to add, how are we doing on time? Can you type in the time, Caroline? Because I can't see my clock. It's 1.30. Oh gosh. You're fast. You're whipping it up. Talk about fast food. This is the best food ever. <laughs> I always say that to all of my friends and clients. I say, you know what, if you, if you really want some fast food, you need to be raw vegan. Just eat raw vegan. You can make all types of stuff in like 10, 15 minutes and um, quicker than it's going to take you to get in your car, drive to the closest drive through, even if you, even if it's healthy, even if you're going to go to a drive through that has a salad, by the time you get in the car, get dressed, get in the car, go there, order it, come back and eat it. You could have you could have made three things already. You could have had some hibiscus ginger lemonade, avocado stuffed uh, portobellos, and dessert. And the amount of time it would have taken you. So here we go. Two to three bananas. Whoa, I just dropped my pineapple. Please hold. Just scoop it back in there. Gotta love it. Okay. Half a cup, pineapple, frozen pineapple. Okay, and then just, all you're gonna need is just a little bit of um, milk, whether it's um, nut milk or seed milk, and the ratios are the same. I think Caroline just wrote that. Um, it's the same, no matter what milk, whether you're using Brazil nuts or cashews or almonds or sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds, it's still a one cup, one cup of nuts or seeds. You can even mix it if you want, but still one cup to, three cups of water, that's gonna give you about a, like a, the consistency of like a 2% milk. If you want it thicker, you just use less water. So one to two ratio. So one cup of uh, nuts or seeds to two cups of water. And if you want more of a skim milk kind of recipe or kind of consistency, it's a one to four. So one cup of nuts or seeds, four cups of water, then it's more like a skim milk consistency. So again, whatever your preference. This is, we're gonna just do um, about two tablespoons, just enough to get the, just to get enough to get it spinning. And you're gonna end up with a consistency of like a soft serve. Mine might be a little looser because my, this has been sitting here for like 30 minutes. So it's gonna be a little loud for just a few seconds, but hang tight. separate little balls. You can kind of see it started separating. I always think that's really cool because you have like four scoops of ice cream. Um, maybe another 15 seconds and we've done that. And so then, and it's like I said, it's a soft serve consistency. If you want to freeze it, you certainly can after this. If you want to freeze it for later um, or just for if you made too much, you know, if you made a lot and you, you intentionally made a lot and you want to save it for future use, you can certainly do that. Otherwise, 
it is a very, like I said, a soft serve consistency. There we go. So I would just love to know in the chat. So the base of it is the bananas, right? Two to three frozen bananas. But what other fruit would you add? Would you do strawberries? Would you do pineapples like I did? What would you add? Oh, and let, and let me just mention. Oh, what did that say? Oh, I'm just, oh, ginger, yes. Oh my gosh, I have a big old thing of ginger right here. I could totally have used ginger in here. Also, I have a big thing of spinach right next to me. So if you really want mangoes, I made mangoes last week. Oh, mango um, ice cream last week. Nice cream last week. Cherries, that sounds good. They'll have some good, and then you can even make some mixtures, right? Um, if you would really want to step up the nutritional content, throw some spinach in here. It's going to be green, but it's still gonna be, you're not going to taste it. The, the, the taste of the pineapple, the taste of the banana, well, really, the pineapple actually overtakes the taste of the banana, and the spinach is really tasteless. So you won't taste it. It's not going to take away from the flavor or change the flavor. Um, that sounds so good. Cherries and cranberries. Oh, my gosh, that sounds delicious. Um, so yes, any of those combinations that you mentioned, and again, you could have put a handful of spinach in here, you would have upped your, uh, your, the, um, nutritional content, added some flavor, basil, oh, I have basil right here, I even have mint right here, I have all kinds of herbs, you can add any of those combinations, cardamom, cardamom, oh my gosh, cardamom is delicious, and so what I'm going to do is, so I've, I've pretty much, let me skip the rest out, the rest out and then what I did do is I you can't see that hold on there we go what I did do is I um took some pomegranate seeds pomegranate is great for um great anti-inflammatory right great if you have arthritis uh plus they're just yummy actually a great source of iron I don't know if y'all knew that cardiovascular is super anti-inflammatory uh, anti-aging there we go and now for the moment of truth, let's taste it. There we go. Pomegranate. Aren't they pretty? Like I really should just take a picture before I dive into it, but I can't because I'm using my phone. Um, but let's taste it. You want to taste? Let's taste. Oh my God. Like you really feel like, you know how sometimes you eat certain things and you're like, I should not be eating this because it's so rich and decadent and you know it's full of fat and sugar. And so you really know that you shouldn't, like you, you tell yourself like, oh man, I should, I, let me just get one tablespoon and be done. Let me tell you, you can eat this guilt-free, totally guilt-free and know that you're doing your body good. It's bananas and pineapples. Like you can't go wrong with that. And like I said, you could have put spinach in it, even better. Delicious, oh my gosh, so good. I made, I made, um. Mango and, um, what do I do? Banana, mango, and pomegranate about three or four days ago. Ooh, blueberries would be great. I love grounded. Oh, I never, oh my goodness, Suzanne, you have given me an idea. I've never tried that. Might have to try that. I will. Mm, delicious. Okay. So I could just start creating some random stuff. I actually thought this would take me a whole, or at least 45 minutes, and then we'd have maybe 15 minutes for, um, Q and A, chia seed. Oh yeah, you could definitely sprinkle some chia on top. I'm loving this toasted flax. Um, I'm gonna definitely have to try that. Thank you for that suggestion, Suzanne. And the blueberries. I'm not sure who did blueberries. Who said blueberries? I think that's Caroline. Blueberries would be great. Well, with that, what question do y'all have? <laughs> I ended it a lot earlier. I could make um, I have one thing, one other thing I could make. But let's entertain some questions first. And if, I, if we still have some time, again, it's not going to take a little bit than 10 minutes max. So any other questions that I missed, Caroline? I'll no, I don't think so. And I invite people to just unmute yourself and, and ask your question. Clear skin. I didn't mention, I don't know why that just popped in my head. Raw vegan, clear skin. Literally, I mean, energy through the roof, skin, amazing. Um, weight release, because it's just it's just one of the natural byproducts of it. Oh, good, Suzanne, I'm so glad. You're welcome. 
I was going to say, um, Cherise actually did a, a cooking class before the pandemic, a live in-person cooking class at our clinic. And all the food that she made was so delicious. Mm. And the couple of things I still make from that class are um, the tortilla soup. Oh my goodness, I was going to make that. <laughs> oh, that is so good. The, I love it because you called it, it's um, no chicken, no... Um, What's the other thing you said? But you said it's the chicken tortilla soup with no chicken and no tortilla. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love that you're still making that. That's one of my favorite things to make. And now it's going to get start getting cold. Although I eat it all year long. But once the weather starts, it changes. Oh, my, man, that's perfect. Yeah. What other questions do y'all have? Do you have an Instagram? I do. It's Cherise Williams. I think my name is on the screen somewhere, if you tap my face. How do you cook sweet potatoes or something, Latin or something? Thanks, Caroline. You can actually eat sweet potatoes raw. You can. Um, believe it or not, I don't eat a lot of sweet potatoes, now that I think about it. But um, what you can eat sweet potatoes raw. You can just chop them up and put them in a salad. You can... Um, I have tried to juice them before. You don't get a whole lot out of them. Um, you can blend them. Or you can just bake them, like most of them. And quinoa or lentils or something, a protein source? How do you cook it? Yeah, well, remember, even, um, well, you may not have been on. Sorry, I, I shouldn't make that assumption. Um, so the two of the other uh, physicians earlier today talked about the whole, pro the whole protein thing. There's protein in everything. There's protein in every uh, vegetable. Like it's almost. This is what I always encourage people: eat the rainbow. Okay, so if you eat the rainbow, you have yellow, red, green, um, other colors. <laughs> um, what's a red, red, yellow, blue? Not blue. Red, yellow, green. What's the little acronym? Anyway, you can rest assured, is Anna, that if you're eating a variety, like the colors from the rainbow, not necessarily every meal. If you can get them in every meal, great. But at least in a 24-hour period, if you're eating all the different colors of the rainbow between your fruits and your vegetables, you can rest assured you're getting plenty of protein. You're getting plenty of nutrients. Make sure you're eating enough calories, of course. Um, and so you really don't have to worry about that. You can eat sprouted quinoa, yes, um, for sure. Um, but again, my whole thing is just, just make sure you're eating the colors of the rainbow on a daily basis. Do you ever sprout lentils? You know, I haven't sprouted lentils. I don't think, if I have, it's been such a long time. Um, they, can be, I, they can be sprouted. I just don't sprout them. Do you sprout them? Have you sprouted them? I have at times. I don't do it regularly. But yeah, yeah they're, they're a little crunchy and so mm -hmm. can be a nice topping. Yeah, it's been so long. But yeah. Oh, speaking of um, sprouting, we could have totally added some um, sprouts, like alfalfa sprouts, on top of our avocado mushroom. So that would have been really good. I added cilantro, which I mean, I, I personally would still add cilantro because I love cilantro and it has so many um, great medicinal benefits. But you could have also added some um, alfalfa sprouts, um, any kind of sprouts. That would have been really good. And we'd add a little crunch to it if you want some crunch. And more, and more protein for that matter. But um, I think mushrooms are like 50% protein. It's, it's, so for the, those of you who are curious about the protein, um, again, there's protein in pretty much everything. And as one of the physicians said earlier, like we as Americans, we over consume protein. We very, I don't know that very few of us, I can't say no one, very few of us are, are, are um, not getting enough protein on a, on a daily basis. What was the, I didn't see that question. It popped up, but then it went away. What do you think about the plant-based meats like Impossible or Beyond Burger? My opinion, it's processed, right? So maybe it's processed with other things, but it's still processed. And so if you, if you remember just one thing from today, eat as close to nature as possible. So if you actually look at, and, and my other thing is, <laughs> if it has a label, on it with a list of ingredients, we, prob we probably should not be eating it. Um, when, you grab, when you get an avocado, the ingredient, avocado, you know exactly what's in it, right? Apple, it's apple. 
when you start having a list of other ingredients, it's processed. The more ingredients it has, the more processed it is. Um, I've never, it's tasty. I, you know what? I don't doubt that it is. They have to make it tasty so that way you, they can sell it. <laughs> so I don't doubt it, but it is very, it's, it's, it's processed. And it has, um, um, I looked at the ingredients. I think it was an impossible burger. Some of those things I can't pronounce. And I have, if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. If you, if you can't, if you can't pronounce it, your body can't recognize it. It doesn't know what to do with it. So it stores it as fat. It doesn't know what to do with it. So it looks as it looks at it as if it's a toxin. So that's my thought. Is it better than eating beef? I mean, I don't know. It's processed. I don't know. I'd probably even argue it might not. It, you might be better off eating beef. At least, I mean, it's beef. I, although there's, well, besides the antibiotics and steroids, all that, well, let's go with this. How about neither? <laughs> How about neither? Or like you said, in moderation. But, you know, it's, it's so easy to, Nowadays, you can find recipes online, you know, for everything, but you can make a delicious veggie burger, like a bean burger, and make a big batch of them, freeze them, and so whenever you want a burger, just pull out of the oven, and pull it out of the, pull it out of the freezer. That's what you have to do with the Impossible Burger and all the other, all the other, all of those other burgers, because they're pre-packaged, but at least you know what's in it, and they're good. They're delicious. beans of lentils and quinoa and brown rice and beets oh my gosh like you can make the best um veggie burger and just make a whole bunch and then freeze them and then pull them out whenever you're ready you don't have to wonder or worry and it's not processed i mean it's all whole foods should i make one more thing maybe future cooking class oh i love that yeah i love doing this y'all i love it so um, I don't know what the time is again, but I could make one more thing maybe, or if we just want to end early, I don't know. You it's let me one, know. It's huh? one forty-seven now. Yeah. yeah so feel, free, feel free to make another thing if you like, Sharice, if you have something handy. I do, yeah. Uh-huh. That means I have to stop eating my nice thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to melt. It's okay. Let me take one more bite. Okay, let's do this. Let me scoot some of this stuff over. I tell you, that nice cream is so delicious. So what you'll need for this, so if you are familiar with like a caprese, um, <laughs> okay, Wendy, um, you can do, you can grab a, an avocado and um, a tomato and basil. You'll need the lemon pepper again. Don't go far, go, don't, always make sure you have some lemon pepper. And, um, and you could also do the, you could do this. Um, you could, of course, you can omit that this is totally optional. It's not raw by any means of the imagination, um, but it is good. Just so. And you're just going to use a little. All right, so here we go. Let me grab it one sec. Okay, let's see. Get this ginger out of the way. Out of the way. And so what we want to do with this one is, let me get it so you can see. I think you can see. All right. And so what you'll want to do is grab a plate. Grab a plate. We'll use heart plates today. So we have a pretty, pretty heart plate. And we are going to slice our, this was just a um, tomato off the vine. And so we're going to just slice them in um, relatively thick slices. You don't want it to be too thin because um, you want it to, um, you want to be, you just want to have thick slices. Beef steak tomatoes are great for this as well. So let me just cut off the bottom. I'm going to make pretty, fairly thick slices. Can y'all see that? Yeah. So these are called, these are Caprice Towers. And so, so now we have what, two, four slices. And we're gonna take our avocado now. Normally we cut our avocado, you know, through the, I guess lengthwise. <laughs> this time we're gonna cut our, we're gonna 
let me not kill it yet. We're gonna cut our avocado in discs to kind of mimic this shape. So we're gonna turn our avocado sideways and cut it that way. And then we'll, we'll peel it in a second. And yes, we'll hit the seed too. It's okay, we're gonna just cut around it. Avocado, I'm, I'm cutting kind of thick. You don't have to, honestly, you can cut them relatively thin. And what's really fun is if you, do, if you do these thick and then the avocado is thin, plus you won't eat the whole avocado anyway. So that's one, two, let's do another. Um, it helps too if you're, if, for this, if your avocado is not as, um, not as ripe, because it'll stay together better. All right, and so now we've got our tomatoes and we've got our avocado. We're not gonna use that one, but it's okay. And so what we're gonna do again, just for, really for decoration, we're gonna, oopsie, just kind of drizzle some on the plate. Again, not much, just, just for decoration. We are going to start with our tomato and we're gonna, we're gonna um, sprinkle each layer with our lemon pepper. You see that? We're gonna sprinkle each layer. Now with this, you could salt it just a very little, like literally a pinch. Um, but I would probably add that pinch at the very end to the very top because again, none of, none of, us, none of us really need a whole lot of salt, but, um, but, we do, but salt is a flavor enhancer. This is onion powder. You could, you, you could use garlic powder if you want to. And then you're just gonna make, you're gonna alternate. I'm gonna take the peel off. Again, with this one, it helps if your avocado isn't as ripe. And then we could sprinkle that again with some lemon pepper. Can y'all see that? Let's get it over. Lemon pepper, little garlic. I mean, I, this is onion powder, but you could do garlic. And then you're just gonna. So normally a caprese is avocado, um, excuse me, <laughs> tomato and um, basil and, oh, I forgot the basil leaves, tomato, basil, and mozzarella. Well, this is actually taking the place of your mozzarella. But let me back up because I need my basil. Oh, where's the basil? Basil. Each layer needs basil. Basil is amazing. Um, number one, it's just so aromatic. It smells delicious. And then number two, it's just so flavorful. It's great for digestive issues too. Um, there we go. So give me one sec. I'm just gonna quickly rinse this and then we're gonna add them to our layers. Okay, all right. So we'll take this one off, put a basil leaf on, another tomato. Another little more lemon pepper, some more onion powder, another avo, and then again. So we're just repeating. You can top it. You can end it with the basil. You can make it as tall as you want, but I will tell you, the taller you make it, the easier it is. It's going to fall over. Um, the likelihood is going to fall over. And the last thing, if you want to, you could add some, one last thing, which is this. Jalapeno, just a slice of jalapeno on top. If you like a little heat. There we go. Last thing we're gonna do is just drizzle it again. You don't have to, it's just pretty. And there you go, Oopsie. You've got a little caprese stack. This, now this is a great, it looks like a snack, but depending on how much avocado you use, it could very well be a lunch in terms of uh, calorically, it could be enough for a lunch. And again, we could, we could keep going, we could go up a couple, couple more layers, um, or you could just make two stacks of two layers, but let's taste it, how about that? So super easy, again, snack or lunch, hate to eat this because it's so pretty <laughs> and then it tumbles down but it's always delicious so hold on <laughs> Wait, don't go. 
Looks like you're chasing it around the plate. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Another another tip though, you could use this and then put like put a little dot of, of this on the plate and then put your tomato and it will keep it a little stationary. You don't have to chase your food. <laughs> okay. Now my staff is totally done, but whatever. Let's taste it. So we've got our avo, we've got our tomato, and let's get some basil. Let's get a piece of this basil. Well, I'm just gonna take the whole basil leaf actually. Okay. It's so fresh. The basil, can y'all see? Mm. The basil is so fresh. So you've got that fresh herbaceous taste from the basil. You've got the tomato, creaminess from the avocado, of course, a little bit of the sweetness from the reduction, the balsamic um, reduction, a little tart from the lemon pepper. It's good. It's good, like literally. And it's quick. This could be, again, an appetizer, a snack. You could, a lot of times I eat it as my lunch. Pair this with, um, I mean, I guess you could pair it with a salad if you wanted to, but I normally just eat it as is. Okay. It's all over the place now. <laughs> You're going fruit shopping. Yay! Yeah. If you don't like, you know, if you don't like heat, you don't have to add the jalapeno. I didn't, I didn't put any jalapeno in that first bite, but now let's. Dare I? Dare I try it? I'm a little scared. <laughs> you know, sometimes it goes down wrong when you start coughing. Hmm. You yeah. never know with jalapenos how hot they are. Say again? You never know with jalapenos how hot they are. They can be so mild and they can be like, ooh. I know. And then you'll get a seed that you don't realize is there. And you're like, oh my gosh. So yeah. So that was the tomato. Well, it's not much of a stack, a stack anymore because I kind of de, de uh, assembled it. But um, but that's a really fun one, an easy one. And your kids can help do this. I mean, you cut everything. And like um, someone was mentioning earlier, get your kids involved because if you can start them younger, that's all they'll know. And, and your taste buds, even as adults, but your taste buds start to change. The more you give it fresh, healthy food, the more that your taste buds wants that fresh, healthy food. And so if you can imagine your, your son or daughter in the kitchen with you from little, you're cutting everything. They're, they're stacking it up. Any kid can stack stuff up. Three or, high, or three or four years old and beyond, they can stack it up. And that's so much fun. So you're teaching them how to eat healthy, how to nourish their body on a cellular level and um, how to eat to live. So that is that. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Cherise. You're very welcome. And thank you for, moder for moderating. So we're going to move now into our seventh session already. My goodness, the time has gone very quickly. I would like to introduce everybody to Maya Acosta. She is a co-leader of the plant-based Dallas-Fort Worth Plant Pure Communities Pod. This is in Dallas. Now, Maya, along with her husband, formed the organization Plant Based DFW, which historically has held community events, guest lectures, plant based potlucks, and walk with a doc programs. Through her Plant Based DW, DFW podcast and YouTube channel, Maya empowers and engages her community with interviews on plant based and lifestyle medicine luminaries, with lectures, with food videos and her segment, Cooking with Maya. So today, Maya will share her many tips on how to make that transition to a plant-based diet a lot more easily. So I'll hand you over to Maya now. Here we go, thank you. Thank you, uh, here we are. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I guess I'll go ahead and start my presentation. Um, actually, I, I guess I have to share my video here. I am a little bit distracted because I have my dog with me today. Um, so here we are. And please let me know if you do see my presentation. Can you see it there? Yes. 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 OK. Awesome, thank you. So like I said, I, I do have a little bit of a distraction with my dog today, but um, you know, I will mention him at the very end of the presentation. So 
I want to say thank you to the Peaceful Planet Foundation and Dr. Sunish and Vandana Chawla, who are just role models to me and great examples of working together as a team and, and building community. So thank you for having me today. And I'm gonna try not to take too much time because I do have a lot of slides, but we're gonna talk about tips to transition to a plant-based diet. And, um, okay, I'm gonna talk about the bowl system and, in, and I'll go ahead and share my resources in terms of where I get the bowl ideas. So we're going to learn how to create healthy bowls with basic ingredients that you may already have in the kitchen. So I'm also going to address some of the obstacles that people tend to have when they're transitioning to a healthier way of eating. So you typically hear, I don't know what to eat, I can't afford it, and I don't have time. And by the way, feel free to add some comments in the chat to tell me what other obstacles um, or reasons you have heard in terms of why people can't get started. But we're gonna start with the, I don't know what to eat um, soon after this slide. So, um, and the final point that I wanna make is how to set yourself up for success by creating your bowls, keeping items in stock and taking the time to prepare those meals. Two of the uh, resources that I really like to reference and share in case um, some of the individuals are not familiar is the app called The Daily Dozen, and that's by Dr. Michael Greger, who wrote the How Not to Die book, and also other books such as How Not to Diet and How to Survive a Pandemic. And he, that app is one of the my favorites because it really breaks it down in terms of what foods we should have on a regular basis and how many servings. And out of those 10 daily dozen, um, out of the 12 dozen um, items, uh, we have 10 that we we're gonna focus on, which include food. And also Rip Esselstyn's Seven Day Rescue Program. Uh, this particular book, uh, The Seven Day Rescue Diet, really is the one that touches on bowls and gives you lots of science behind why we wanna eat this way, gives you great combinations and recipes uh, to create your healthy bowls at home. So again, here is the Daily Dozen. I kind of wanted to enlarge the font there to show you that when we talk about the bowls today, we are going to focus on, or you'll see that you could actually have a lot of these servings um, if you're doing your regular bowls. So you have beans and grains and fruits, vegetables, greens, berries, cruciferous, which are your broccoli and your cauliflower and kale falls in that too, flaxseed, nuts, spices, and of course, beverages, which we mainly drink water and exercise, which has been really mentioned today. So uh, without going too much into detail about the book, I just wanted to show you some images of what the system looks like in the Engine 2 Rescue book. Um, I love these. Uh, I have the book, so I encourage you to go out and get it. Uh, the PDF comes with these um, printable diagrams that you can actually have on your refrigerator so that you know how to build your bowl. So let's start with what a bre breakfast bowl looks like. Um, which by the way, before I went plant-based, I had no idea that I could actually have like rice for um, in my morning bowl or for breakfast, not even sweet potatoes. Um, usually when you think of breakfast, you're thinking of those um, kind of hearty foods that are kind of also heavy in the stomach, like, you know, uh, eggs and bacon and pancakes and waffles and, you know, loaded with syrup and butter and all that stuff. But actually, when you prepare yourself and you set yourself up every day to have a delicious breakfast bowl that has rice that's either brown rice, black or red rice or oatmeal, quinoa, sweet potatoes, you are going to feel good throughout the day and you will have energy. Um, here you can see a list of fruits that you can put on your bowl. So apples, bananas, berries, clementines, grapefruit, grapes, kiwi, mangoes, and the list goes on. Uh, one thing that you can do is add toppings on top of that bowl, like chia seeds, cinnamon to really flavor it. Um, hemp seeds are one of my favorite uh, ingredients to use because they're hearty. You have nutmeg, pumpkin, pie spice, vanilla extract, walnuts. Um, and if you still do require sort of like a nut milk, you know, we don't use dairy, but you can use a nut milk such as almonds, soy, um, or oats, and just make sure it's an unsweetened nut milk. Um, let me know what you would put on a breakfast bowl. So 
uh, oh, going back here, here are some examples of what these bowls look like. So you have an oatmeal topped with delicious fruit. And that's typically what I would have in the morning. You have a quinoa with fruit. I wouldn't use, I believe that's like peanut butter. I don't tend to use peanut butter. Um, and also one of my favorite things is doing like a chia parfait. These are easy to store overnight in a jar and you just use your nut milk and just a small serving of uh, chia seeds and then top with your favorite fruits. Here you can see another side angle of that. So that, believe it or not, could be your breakfast. So a lot of times people think of yogurt um, as a breakfast. This one actually gives you energy and fills you up nicely. Okay, so if we're talking about um, salad bowls, here we have, and by the way, salad bowls are some of the favorite uh, bowls that we like to have in our home. Dr. Riss and I love to have arugula, kale, and spinach as our foundation for our bowl. And we do use vegetables, but we also use fruit. And I saw that, Char, um, was it Charlize? Uh, I'm sorry if I got your name wrong. I saw that you use pomegranates and that's one of my favorite ingredients to top my salads with. So I like um, pomegranates, I like watermelon, pears are delicious on a salad bowl. Um, and then you can also roast or cook your Brussels sprouts and you can use, um, all sorts of hearty foods, sweet potato and things like that on your bowl. Um, then you power it up with legumes. And uh, the doctors earlier talked about where you can find your plant-based protein. Well, black beans, any kinds of beans, any of these beans that are listed are delicious. They give you energy. They also help balance that sugar level um, and keep you energized, like I said, throughout the day. You can top your salad with a little bit of avocado, uh, it's also vinegar was brought up today and other toppings. We can use hummus, we can use jalapenos um, and spices, just like the Daily Dozen mentions um, using spices. Sorry, going on backwards. This is one of my favorite salads that we make on a regular basis. Um, we typically, like I said, use arugula and we like beets and pear in our salad makes for such a delicious combination. Here you see other examples. You can have kidney beans in your salad bowl. Again, pumpkin. Um, well, this one, you can use either butternut squash or uh, potato salad. I'm sorry, sweet potatoes. Oops, my sweet dog has distracted me. <laughs> okay, more photos of salads that you can have. This is also, I wanted to encourage you by using these photographs to remember to use colors and all the ingredients that you can put in your bowls are always, you know, all of these ingredients are nutritious. They um, have antioxidants um, and so many other properties that are great for you and full of vitamins and uh, minerals. Um, I like the idea of grilling the avocado, as you can see here. Again, I wouldn't use a lot of avocado. Um, you know, we talked about uh, earlier was mentioned that plant-based fat, fats, especially if you are focusing on losing weight, you still want to, um, you know, have a small amount of that in your diet. Okay. And then finally, Super Bowls. Uh, you know, when I lived in California, I only knew them as Buddha bowls, uh, but bowls are becoming more and more popular. And so this you can have throughout the day, you know, but if you're gonna have it in the evening, you can choose things like whole grain pasta as a foundation, your barley, rice, again, a variety of healthy rices, farro, polenta, which polenta is fairly new to my diet. I didn't even know what it was before I went plant-based um, and potatoes along with quinoa. And, you know, potatoes were also brought up earlier today. I, when I discovered this way of eating, especially when I read the start solution, I was so happy to learn that I could eat the carbohydrates that many people had told me were bad for us, right? Because um, there's some, a lot of misinformation, but uh, really what we know now is that the animal-based and dairy-based uh, ingredients along with the oils are the ones that contribute to weight gain. And so you have that foundation and you're gonna power your Super Bowl with again, legumes. So black beans tend to be some of my favorite beans along with cannellini, chickpeas, especially if you roast your chickpeas, um, pinto beans. And then you can, again, heat it up by adding other ingredients such as beets, 
You can add uh, bell peppers, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, collard greens, zucchini. Um, and then again, use any of the toppings that make it uh, you know, flavorful for you, such as ginger and fresh herbs, cracked black pepper, hummus, mango. Mustard is also another ingredient that I never really liked until I became plant-based because foods, you know, the healthier foods taste better over time. So here we go. We have a stuffed sweet potato. This has become kind of a, a staple in our home. We like to stuff the sweet potato with beans and greens. Um, Dr. Codwell Esselstyn always talks about taking advantage of putting greens into any meal uh, in you, throughout your day. Um, here's another example of that. Uh, chickpeas, carrots, steamed vegetables can also be great ingredients um, for your potatoes. And then you can still have pasta, but have it whole grain. And I like the combination of pasta with greens. Uh, and then I like cherry tomatoes in my pasta. I like sun-dried tomatoes, avocado, um, and you could just get real creative. Uh, here's another example of a pasta bowl. And quinoa is one of my favorite ingredients. Like I said, you can have quinoa for breakfast. You can have quinoa throughout the day. And it's just a matter of knowing how to flavor your food to make it delicious. Uh, here's an example of polenta. Polenta topped with um, sauteed in oil, um, not in oil, but in water mushrooms. Uh, that's a good combination. And mushrooms taste so nicely when they're cooked um, with onion. Okay, here's another example. This one tends to, it looks like it has some oil, but pretend like you don't see that. <laughs> here's some Moroccan chickpeas uh, with barley salad. So again, it's a matter of getting real creative with ingredients that you have. Barley is another ingredient that I hardly ate before I went plant-based. More examples here, a little bit of tofu if you're comfortable with that. And um, I have three, um, and I have that word misspelled, Amazon, but I have three dressings. So if you wanna take a snapshot of this uh, slide, I have three of them, uh, three different dressings that are compliant uh, with the way that we wanna eat and that you can use on any of your bowls, uh, your salad bowl or your uh, Buddha bowl. So you see you have uh, lime juice, cumin, chopped onions, cilantro, basil, and jalapeno peppers. And you basically just blend them and serve them over your dress, over your uh, salad. And also we have sesame seeds dressing. This is one of my favorites. And again, you just whisk the ingredients and add them to your bowl. And ginger miso dressing is one of my favorite dressings. You have white miso, fresh ginger, which we know ginger is so good for our health. Uh, maple syrup, if you're not comfortable with maple syrup, you don't have to add it. Um, rice vinegar, water, and sesame seeds. Again, whisk them and add them to your uh, bowl. Okay, so we just addressed one of the obstacles, which was, I don't know what to eat. Well, based on the Daily Dozen, if you download the app or go to nutritionfacts.org, you'll have an idea of all the different foods that you can eat. So we focus on what we can eat, not what we cannot eat. Um, well, there's, there's another obstacle, I can't afford it. So we tend to hear people say that the reason that they don't purchase or don't go plant-based or purchase um, produce is because produce is expensive. Well, I think it's because a lot of times we focus and correct me if I'm wrong um, and feel free to leave me some comments about this. Um, people tend to focus on the most expensive uh, ingredients in the produce section, which are the organic uh, foods or they're shopping at places like Whole Foods or Sprouts, which sometimes can be a little bit more expensive. Um, so if you are concerned about whether your foods should be organic or inorganic, I encourage you to keep a list of the dirty dozen and you'll see it here. These are the foods that if you are going to um, buy organic, make sure that you buy these organic. Dr. Michael Greger actually just um, basically says that the benefits um, outweigh the concerns. So just really rinse your foods, uh, your produce. So you have strawberries that can be a concern, grapes, cherries, 
pears, peaches, some of the greens like spinach, kale, call, um, collard greens, mustard greens, and celery, all of those can be of concern. But again, just buy those organic and then focus on your other ingredients. Um, and so here are some other tips on how you can buy inexpensive produce. Uh, from traveling, when we go to other states, I always tend to visit Walmart because they have more affordable produce. Uh, a few people started pointing out to me that Aldi's has a nice selection of produce and that I started visiting that place and I was really happy about that. I hear people tell me that Costco has a variety of fruits as well. And then ethnic foods, um, you know, ethnic uh, stores tend to have such an incredible selection of foods. There's a Korean a grocery store that you guys have probably have heard of called H, H Smart or H Mart. They have an incredible selection of produce and it's one of my favorite stores to go to. Also consider buying seasonally. You can always Google in your area what foods are available seasonally and they will tend to be at a more reasonable price. Um, nothing wrong with buying frozen foods. As a matter of fact, I keep some of my items frozen because they store a little bit longer and all I have to do is just steam my vegetables and add them to my, um, to my bowls. Uh, okay, so canned and dried goods, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So um, basically what you can do is buy the canned vegetables. Again, just make sure that they're low sodium and they're, that they are BPA free. That's a, a main priority is to make sure that the can is safe. And also your dry goods and going back to Walmart, Walmart has such a great selection of like dry beans, dry, um, rices that are affordable. Also, if you are at a grocery store like Whole Foods or um, Sprouts, consider looking in the bulk section. Of course, right now the bulk section because of the pandemic has changed a little bit. So now everything's packaged again, but typically in the bulk section, you will find the ingredients to be a lot more affordable because you're not paying for the extra labeling, packaging and name brand. Um, and don't shop when you're hungry, of course. Uh, when, you're, you know, when you're hungry, you tend to buy things that are not necessarily the healthiest for you. It's kind of the way we're designed. Uh, consider how much you actually spend when you're eating out. I think uh, many of us don't actually sit down and calculate that, but not long ago, I was speaking with a financial advisor who counsels her um, clients. And I asked her, what's the one thing that people spend the most money on and that they do not become aware of until they actually sit down with you. And she said, food. Food is the number one place where a lot of money is spent. And that's because it's so convenient to order in. Uh, it's so convenient to eat out uh, and to just buy foods that are already made. So even some people think that it's more expensive going plant-based, but it's actually, if you sit down and do the math, it's less expensive because you're not paying for the overhead prices of eating at a restaurant, for example. So what about not having enough time? So a good friend of ours here in the Dallas area, when we first went plant-based, taught us this jar system, which I don't know how many people have heard of it, but I'm just gonna speak on the basic uh, level in terms of if it's just you at home. You know, you wanna spend one day a week preparing all your vegetables, whether that's slicing or chopping or dicing and preparing them in jars so that they're available for your bowls throughout the week. Um, you can cook your beans and your grains ahead of time as well and, and store them in jars. Another thing that she does in terms of a jar system is she, part, she basically has this community-based event where she invites 10 people to participate in the jar system. They choose the one ingredient they wanna prepare in 10 jars. So one person has 10 jars of say broccoli and then they all meet up and they exchange jars. So now you have 10 jars with 10 different ingredients that you're bringing home and they're prepped and ready to go for you to create your healthy um, Huda bowls. So that's a good idea if you wanna do it. It's a little more difficult right now with the pandemic. Um, you wanna batch cook your beans and your grains and or the main foundational ingredients that you'll be using in your bowls, like your quinoa, your oatmeal, uh, your rice and if you have a pressure cooker and instant pot that's a huge huge advantage but this really saves a lot of time and typically I find that you don't have to prepare for seven days a week maybe five days because there's always enough left over uh, to continue eating for those five days 
Okay, so finally, uh, my final point on this one is set yourself up for success. So keep a list of meals that you like. And that uh, Dr. Nancy Erickson said that earlier is, you know, don't force yourself to eat foods that you normally wouldn't eat. Consider the flavors that you like. You don't have to already be fully plant-based. I'm sure there are a lot of ingredients that are plant-based that you're, you enjoy eating today. So keep those items stocked in your pantry, in your fridge, in your uh, freezer so that they are always available. I find that if I have ingredients that are available every day, I'm not struggling with trying to figure out what I'm going to eat. And that's also because people tend to focus on a recipe. So they come home and they say, well, I, I want to eat Italian. And then do I have all the ingredients? So rather than thinking about a recipe, think about how you can make a bowl that's flavorful. Um, prepare your ingredients, say, on a Sunday and invite a loved one to help you out. So that could be a significant other, family member, a friend, or a child. And, you know, who doesn't like prepping together. So finally, after this long day that you have spent, uh, you know, being part of this retreat, so you've done yoga and meditation, you've heard from the doctors speak about nutrition. And really, this is a day for you to self care to take care of yourself and to learn what you can do to improve your health. And so I want to challenge you um, that this evening, after you have dedicated this whole day to taking care of yourself, to go in your kitchen and in your pantry and to see if you can already make a bowl. So do you have quinoa? Do you have rice? Do you have whole grain pasta? Do you have beans? Do you have vegetables and some of these other toppings and see what you can come up with already? If you do that and you post it, please tag me at um, hashtag cooking with Maya. And I wanted to show you on the upper right hand corner of this slide, you see, this is the power plate that was put together by the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. So I, you know, it's a wonderful organization that I love to support as well. And so if you look at their power plate and you look at what the bowls consist of, you're pretty much on track towards eating the right foods for your health. And finally, as um, it was mentioned in my intro, I do have a little segment on um, our YouTube channel called um, Cooking with Maya. And so here's some information on how you can find us. You can pretty much find me on Plant Based DFW, whether that's our website, our Instagram, Facebook, Facebook group, YouTube. Um, and I'm also on um, Clubhouse at, at Maya Acosta. And so to kind of plug a little bit of my cooking show, the next one that we have coming up is on October 21st at noon central time. And I have Rachel Detroit. Uh, she actually has a whole movement called chronic movement. She was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis at the age of 28. And she realized that whole plant-based foods actually help her to calm the body down. And she will be coming on the show and we will be preparing Lebanese tabbouleh. And as probably a lot of you know, it's a very popular dish. It's becoming very popular here in the States. And as you can see, that's a photo of one of her tabbouleh bowls. It's a bowl, it's a salad bowl. We are going to be making the salad bowl without any oil. And in place of bulgur, we are going to use um, hemp hearts. And so feel free, it's a free event. Just follow, uh, you can just go to my website for more information on that. And then, you know, going back to the Daily Dozen by Dr. Michael Greger and some of the conversations that have happened today include movement and which also helps manage, you know, to manage stress. I always talk about how for me, it's very benef beneficial to be in nature because when I'm feeling, experiencing a lot of stress, going out for a walk and surrounding myself by trees really helps me to calm down. And so we are, uh, part of Walk with the Doc, just like Drs. Munish and Bandana Chawla. And so we are resuming our walks um, with practicing safety, of course. Uh, so our next walk, if you happen to be in Dallas, is on October 16th. And finally, in closing, I, I want to tell you a little story about our dog. Um, his name is Papi Chulo. He's a miniature minpin. Um, we got him this year. And he was only four and a half months when we brought him into our home. And I had never had a dog. Um, growing up, we weren't allowed to have animals in the house. And so the reason that my husband and I took so long in having a dog together 
was because we really didn't think we would have the time to raise a dog or puppy. Like we were open to any dog. Um, now we brought him in, he wasn't trained. Uh, he lived in a house, he was a backyard dog. So he was not house trained or potty trained. And it was a lot of work <laughs> to, you know, basically teach him how to potty train. Now we're training him how not to pull on the leash. And it, it took a lot of patience, persistence, and continue to love our dog, um, despite the days. We have good days and we have bad days when it comes to training our dog, but we continue to love him. And when I look back, I think about how I did not make this choice sooner because I was afraid that I wasn't ready. And it's the same way with anything that we embrace in life. We sort of tend to think that it's harder than it really is. And so I found the right support. I found the right way to train our dog. I asked for support. And then I realized that when something is really important to you, you find the time. And so my life has changed. I'm not able to work as much as I used to, but at the same time, there's so much um, wonderful love that comes from experiencing having puppy in my life. And so the reason that I say all of that is to say to you to convey the message that it's, I wanna ask that you be patient with yourself, that you continue to be persistent as you are on this journey of self-care and as you transition into a plant-based diet and remember to love yourself, celebrate the good days, even though you may have some bad days, but know that what you're doing today is going to contribute to a healthier life in the future. So thank you. Thank you, Maya. That was beautiful and so inspiring. Thank you for taking that last part to really um, inspire us to move towards whatever our goals are, whether they're related to health or diet or exercise. Um, and you know, mm -hmm. even though your talk was tips on moving towards a plant-based diet, I've been plant-based for almost nine years and I still learned a lot from your talk. I am totally inspired to do more bowls. Um, the other thing I like about the bowls is you only have to wash one dish the bowl. That's <laughs> and that's where it gets the name, I think, Buddha's bowl is because the Buddhist monks are only allowed to own one bowl. And so whatever they get that day, they just put it in that bowl and they eat it because that's all they own is one bowl. So I'm inspired. I'm, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. I did not know that. That even confirms, you know, how good this is. Thank you so much. And by the way, as I was talking, my dog was pulling at me and, I, you know, he's wanting to play with me. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's helping me. He's helping me to be more patient as well. And he's my, another reason why I want to be healthy is to enjoy those days with him as well. So I wasn't sure if there were any comments I, uh, or questions. There are lots of comments and they're saying okay. <laughs> wonderful presentation. Thank you, Maya. Oh, thank you. But yeah, if there are any questions, you know, for Maya, and I'll, you know, open it up to other folks that are here. Dr. Colte is still here. Uh, Maya is here and lots of other folks that have a lot of plant-based knowledge. But if you have questions specific to Maya, please feel free to ask. It has been an amazing retreat, yes. <laughs> and so, uh, like I mentioned, uh, you can download the uh, Daily Dozen app, and I believe it's now been updated. So he's add some, added some other things to that app. Um, and also, I don't know how many people use it, but he really gives you really wonderful examples of how you can incorporate these foods into your diet. I have it on my phone, but I don't use it as much as I should. So thank you for the reminder. <laughs> yeah. And also it is a journey. I, you know, when I think of how, when I first started, I was focusing on what I, I shouldn't be eating. And so that meant that I was, I, I was eating vegan processed foods. And I share that often that first year that I went vegan, I was not eating the healthiest. I was focusing on not eating animal-based products, but I was also eating the processed foods. And that was brought up earlier by the doctors as well as, you know, 
just if we spend time preparing these ingredients, then we see, we're more likely to stay away from the processed foods because the processed foods are the ones that are easy to obtain, right? Thank you so much. And thank you thank all you. so much. Um, it's almost 3.30. Thank you for spending the day with us. Um, so I'll go ahead and close out. Um, as you guys know, I'm Dr. Bantna Chavla, co-founder of Peaceful Planet Foundation. Thank you so much for supporting the work of our nonprofit and for joining us today online. I also want to thank all the presenters for donating their time and talents to this event. No person has been paid for any of the sessions today, and it is through their generosity that our nonprofit can spread the word of peace, health, and wellness. Mm -hmm. The retreat was online today because we have still not gotten fully past this pandemic. The past 20 months have been so challenging for so many of us. And if we hope to come out of this shared adversity more resilient than ever, then we will do it as a community. Though we could not do this event in person this year, watching all of you on Zoom today certainly gave me a sense of belonging, a sense of community. It reminded me of the power of connection, even if sometimes it is virtual. Pandemics and other ups and downs of life are part of our shared human experience. In addition to community, what will allow us to flourish as an individual and as a society is our focus on self-care. And Maya mentioned this as well. Self-care is not indulgent nor selfish. It is being compassionate to ourselves. If we practice self-care by eating a predominantly whole foods vegan diet, bringing daily movement into our day, practicing yoga and other mindful techniques and choosing to stay connected, we will experience better physical health, emotional health and inner peace ourselves. And we will become empowered to spread peace, health and wellness to others around us. If we put into practice the words of Mahatma Gandhi, whose birthday it is today, be the change you wish to see in the world. We can no doubt transform ourselves and our society. From all of us at Peaceful Planet Foundation, I thank you for joining us today. And I wish all of you peace, health, and wellness.